with the warehouse uh, all the years I've been working with it, what I like is the often it's within four walls. So it's the system that you're looking is very clear and you have input and output. Um, and it's easy to, to talk about and claim, but when you start scratching the surface, something that seems very simple, uh, it very quickly becomes extremely complex. When I started teaching this course, it was in 2010. Before that, I worked with the United Nations. I worked with warehousing out in, in emergency operations. Uh, but when I started doing research and then teaching in 2010 until 2020, over you know, those two, 10 years, I would say warehousing has gone through a dramatic or fantastic journey uh, moving up on the agenda. Uh, because it's no longer possible like to, to neglect and just look at it as Okay, we put it there and it costs some money to, and, and then the important is production and transportation. Uh, we can actually get a uh, cutting edge by uh, having the right warehouse, which is tailored for exactly your needs. If I went to a warehouse 10 years ago, many of them looked kind of the same way. Uh, but now, and now we're talking retailing, so then you have other warehouses like for production and so on. But, now, if you go into warehouses, you may find that they actually look quite different uh, and they're more tailored. Uh, they often grow in size and they have uh, chosen either to integrate, separate online and, and retail store. They have chosen a specific uh, automation solution that fits. Um, so it's more interesting now, I think, to, to actually go out and see, well, okay, you solved it in this way. And okay, what are your challenges? What are your contexts? What lead times do your customers require? How big are your products? Uh, and so on. Dangerous to look at another warehouse and, and say, okay, we're gonna follow, follow them and what, copy what they did. Rather, it's more important now to, to really understand what is our context here and really design it take good time for the planning. The competences is a little bit shifting. Uh, I used to work in a warehouse myself, driving a forklift. Uh, you, you can still have that in part of the warehouse, but you also have a lot of technology um, in different shapes, depending on uh, what are your context challenges and so on. So you can either uh, if you focus on uh, chasing lead times, for example, to make a really fast throughput, um, or you focus more on a flexible system that can handle uh, variations in sizes and variations in pat order patterns, um, or you can uh, choose a system that more uh, squeezes out the space, like uh, build high and so on. So. Uh, and that, that, those discussions are currently ongoing in almost every company, retailer, uh, high up in the organization. So I think automation now has moved from if, and it's more like a how question, and we have more types of automation that can you know, um, be really tailored to your specific operation. Uh, so before we could see that it was a few uh, companies that really um, are pioneers. Uh, now it's just you have to have it. Uh, so the question is really, uh, okay, what automation should you have? Uh, and uh, I think now we see m more and more flexible automation. Before we, it was used to say that, okay, People are flexible, automation is not so flexible, so you lose flexibility. But I think the new or next generation of automation is now, with artificial intelligence, is even going further into that area. And it's quite the opposite, like it's more flexible with the robots, so it has kind of changed the game. I think it all started a few years back with the increase of e-commerce. Um, challenging the traditional way of, of uh, using a warehouse to send goods to the physical retail stores, uh, quite uh, large deliveries, and suddenly you're mixing in a warehouse uh, with uh, like a customer that ordered one pair of shoes, uh, 
and two t-shirts and so on. And we saw how this created a challenge in many warehouses. Um, and we could also see that different retailers uh, started to following different uh, paths. Um, so, and then we started asking, okay, why are they, what paths are, are they following and why are they doing it? So one obvious thing is like, if you're in a warehouse, should you combine um, the distribution for retail stores, which are bigger distribution, like filling bigger trucks and, uh, and e-commerce, should you put it all in the same place? Um, and the benefit of doing that is probably you could you use the same inventory, uh, so it's uh, less tied up capital, for example. Or should you separate them into two different warehouses and doing one uh, pure online, um, where you could tailor the warehouses more for online or for um, the, the retail stores. And so we could see how, how companies started to to follow different paths, but it was more like trial and error, uh, no real guidance. The obvious ones are the size of the throughput, clearly, uh, uh, because you know, then, then you can get some economy of scale uh, in, in your operation. Um, then I would say it's size of goods, uh, because we can see still the automation solutions Many of them are tailored more for uh, smaller uh, articles, uh, SKUs. So if you have a very little variation, then you can really tailor uh, and make a specific. Um, but as soon as you start to add variation in the types of orders that you receive, and uh, so for example, mixing in the retail store orders with the e-commerce orders, then you need to, to start uh, putting more money into your solution. And the similar goods size, if you have a big variation, uh, then you have to have different zones maybe, and you can have different solutions for there. So, and then you have the, the issue with the demand variations over, often then we talk about the year, you can have a Black Friday or any holiday, where it suddenly is like 500% uh, the increase in the demand. Often when you go out to warehouse managers and then, you know, to start talking about what are their main issues or what main factors that they consider, those are the ones like uh, throughput, the, the goods characteristics, the order characteristics. Um, and then, of course, we have other factors, uh, depending on where in the world, the, the cost of labor, for example, the cost of land, if you're close to a city or if you're out in the outskirts where you can perhaps buy more land. Um, and then I, one factor that is still showing when we go into different automation solutions is still his, it's the history. Um, because it, often you don't get the chance to make a, a greenfield project. You build on what you already have. The global giants kind of setting the agenda uh, and the competition. So we see some kind of cluster movement where they are offering uh, uh, 12 hour lead time. We, we need to also offer that time. Uh, but if, if you have then uh, shorter lead times, this is, I would say, one of the major trends uh, that impacts warehouses. You, you come to a point where you have trade-offs, so you can't just uh, keep cutting the, the throughput times in the warehouse while you're going to handle a big mix of orders and a big mix of goods. So then uh, you need to look into what options do we have. And I think that is one very interesting trend. Like uh, if you go back 20 years, we, we many centralized to create the economy of scales. But now maybe we see a trend going more towards decentralized. Um, and then we come to not only having the big central warehouses, but creating other types of material handling nodes. So I think if we read about micro fulfillment centers, so it's like uh, warehouses or material handling nodes closer to the customers, uh, because we cannot fulfill that short lead time only in the warehouse. Uh, so we need to look at the warehouse and the, the distribution network together and see how can we uh, solve this, this issue. I think first of all realize that you know you need uh, 
team with with strong competences. Uh, so you need a strong logistics manager with solid understanding of warehousing. It's once you start scratching the surface, it's it's very complicated. And then you need a team with, you know, the IT uh, manager and uh, understanding of automation. Uh, so we can see those logistics warehousing teams grow. So I would say make sure you have the competences in house. Uh, if you if you're smaller and you need to. Um, to find it externally, then find a good partner uh, to guide you, and uh, not to be sold a system that doesn't really fit your business. Um, so it's it's all about that matching and fitting, um, and then it's a good investment. Otherwise, you're stuck <laughs> with the system, and that's the complexity and, and the issue for warehousing because the world is changing really fast, and warehouses are uh, very difficult to change fast. So all the more important to, to um, uh, not get it exactly right, but you know as close as possible uh, and try to look into the future and uh, to see the big picture uh, and work closely with the entire supply chain uh, because they uh, influence each other, the warehouse and the supply chain.